My name is Aaron Bayshuk. I work for Atlantic Records. I'm the Senior Vice President of A&R. A lot of people think it stands for Artist Relations. It stands for Artists and Repertoire, meaning just that. We deal with artists and we deal with the song catalogs, the repertoire that, uh, of music that we're putting together. A lot of my job is just about getting an understanding of who the artist that I'm working with is, who they want to be, helping facilitate that process, um, put the right producers with the right songwriters, and try to get the best results we can. It takes a long time to have success as an A&R person, even if you're really great at it. You sign an artist, right? They don't come out tomorrow. They come out, you know, the quickest a year later, but that's even a rarity. You know, it's usually two, three years. You work on these projects for a long time. The whole building has to understand the vision. They have to get behind it. We're not signing artists that are ready to be platinum artists the day that they're signed. It's a, rare, it's a real rarity to find something like that. Bruno's definitely, certainly my biggest success and the thing I'm most proud of of everything I've done in my eight, nine years in this business. I mean, the short story is uh, I was an assistant here for Mike Karen and he couldn't go to a Notting Hill uh, music publisher mixer. And so I went without telling him. And I, at the time, I remember I, I had been here long enough to get a business card and I was still an assistant, but they didn't put assistant on the, the card. It just said A&R. It says you're just your department. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll walk up and just show this card. They'll let me in. And sure enough, they did. And there I met a songwriter who had just moved to LA himself named Phil Lawrence. And we hit it off in conversation. And I said, yo, just come by the office. Why don't we sit down and, and let me hear what you have? Phil came in with his manager. You know, they were, they were both so green, as was I, that, you know, and, and Phil played me a couple cool things, but enough that I was like, you know what, I bet this guy feels like this guy's got some potential. Let me, let me continue to work with him. And a few months after that, he's like, you know, I'm about to work with this guy, Bruno Mars. You should meet him. He just got dropped from Motown, never even cut a record for them. It was kind of a real quick deal. So Bruno came by the studio, and, and this was probably, what, 2005, maybe? You know, Bruno showed up, just had his guitar with him, and his intention was just to write with Phil for the session then, that I brought him in for. And uh, Bruno pulled out the guitar, sang one song. I don't remember if it was his own or, or, or just something that had been out, but I heard that voice and it was a no-brainer for me. And I, I actually brought him into Atlantic the next day and um, the chain of command just kind of told me, listen, we don't, we don't really see it. Uh, it's a little bit early and uh, he doesn't seem to have any songs. And all of their points were perfectly valid. We have our, all our mental checklist when we meet new talent of you know, what we need to see and hear to be willing to sign somebody. And, and he really didn't have any of the criteria except that voice. I just didn't give up. And over the course of five years, I always called Phil, and Phil and Bruno became a writing team, and I gave them every opportunity I could to have them become better writers and better producers. They were always my go-to, no-name writers for every project that I had because I believed so strongly in them and, and knew what their versatility was. And, um, and during those years, I would see Bruno perform uh, as an artist across town, little venues, and, and you know, I always loved it. And I kept asking myself, what am I, why do I love this so much and nobody else seems to? And, and then it all clicked. They, we all got a, a hit together with Flow Rider Right Round. That led to Phil and Bruno getting a lot of calls from other labels, uh, other A&R people. You know, it's amazing when, you, when you're on the Hot 100. You know, he sees the, the writer name, so every label's looking at that. Oh, who are these guys, Phil and Bruno? And so, long story short, it was over those five years that they really developed as songwriters and producers. They met their third partner of the Smeezingtons, Ari Levine, and the three of them together really identified a sound that worked for Bruno. And uh, I booked them for one week of sessions to work on B.O.B. and Travi McCoy. And out of that week, we got Nothing On You and Billionaire. And so then walking into the building with those two songs, it was very clear how I was gonna break Bruno. They let me do the deal. And then it all kind of really took off very fast. So that's one of those things to the outside world, it looks like Bruno was signed and then it was boom. But it was really five years of, of helping them understand who they wanted to be. They developed dramatically as producers and as songwriters. Writing for other people helped them find their voice for writing for themselves. A lot of things went into play there. I, you know, Phil would spend nights on my couch, Bruno would spend nights on my couch. We really all spent a long time together because we, in, in, in essence, they wanted to be artists, I wanted to be an A&R person, but we were both in the same place, you know, very beginning of our careers, doing anything we could to get some recognition and to get hits out there. And so that was what made this so fulfilling, the success so fulfilling was, uh, you know, we could look back and say, man, look, we started here and now we ended up here and we did this together.